Hey friends, welcome! In this one we're going to learn how we can use WebSockets with Silkit. This is a tutorial on using WebSockets and how they work, but how to get it working in Silkit so you can work on your project like if you have a multiplayer game and etc. In my use case I was working on an editor for Java Code and here on the right I'm using WebSockets to have a live preview because what you see on the left gets sent to the server and it gets crunched in some markdown processing chain and then I get an output on the right so I get a live update preview. So that's my use case, but I ran into a problem. I couldn't figure out how to get WebSockets working, so I started digging around and I figured it out. So let me share that with you. So here I'm only using a normal Svelte project, nothing special. Here I'm running the development server and on the side is the project. And then let's go back to the post and I mentioned here, this might change in the future and Svelkit might have support for WebSockets natively. So it might be something like this if you're watching this in the future, but this doesn't exist yet, unfortunately. So you can read more about this in the discussion here that I'm going to link in the post. And then if you go here, you can see all this interesting discussion. Also thanks to Bob Fanger for giving me this helpful tip here, how to make this work in development. So let me go back here, I'm going to close this. So another solution is to create a separate server, but then you have to run two things on separate ports. So let me show you how we can use Svelkit instead. So first we're going to explore how to do it in development, which is simple. We're going to write a simple Vite plugin and hook into its development server. It sounds complicated, but it's really not. Uh, if you can see here, this is the example code. This is the entire plugin, almost, right? And yeah, that's it. There's more socket IO code than <laughs> Vite, to be honest with you. So the only other thing you're going to need, because this is a tutorial web sockets, I'm using socket IO as an example, which is a really awesome library, so you don't have to worry about web sockets. And you're going to need the Svelte adapter node, because this doesn't work without the Svelte adapter node. And you're going to learn why. So we can close this. So the first thing to make this work in development is go to the Svelte config. And as I show this in this code, you have to change this from adapter auto to node. And then we can import server from socket.io. And then we're going to create our plugin. So we can say export const WebSocket server, which is an object. Let's give it the name WebSocket server. And then let's use configure server. It gives us a server. And we can say const io new server. We're going to use the server and we're going to get the HTTP server from it. And if you're unsure where this is from, this is from Vit, and you can learn that from the Vit documentation. So yeah, so we can use our WebSockets. We can say on connection. So when it connects, we can say socket. And then we can say socket emit event from server because we're going to catch it on the client. We can say hello world. Let me just copy over this emoji. Oops. Yeah, and that's almost it. So we just need to use the plugin. So here we can see kit. Let me just close the terminal because we don't need it. Yeah, so we can say vit. You should get auto completion plugins and then we can say web socket server yeah, and then we can save it but don't remember you have to read on your server but first let me just include the client code and also if this gets out of hand you can just abstract this into a separate file and that's it so let me just go to source routes here is our index file i just want to show you how it would look like on the client yeah so we can go here and we can say script language type script and then we can import socket IO on the client. We can say IO from socket IO client const socket IO. Let's invoke it. And then we're going to say event from server. Again, this isn't a WebSocket tutorial, but I just want to give you some helpful information. And then we can log this out. So if you're unsure with WebSockets, here is where we emitted this event from and our client should catch this. So one thing we have to do is restart our development server. So let me go here and you know me, I'm always paranoid. 
So let me just start this up in PRM Dev, and we should see the message here when we restart this. And here it is, hello world. And that's awesome. So now you have WebSockets working in development, but the problem is how do you get it working in production, which is the second step. So if I go here in the post, also before I go here, let me just uh, show you something awesome. So if you have some reactive value and you need to emit it when a value changes, you can just use a reactive block in SwellKit, which is really awesome. So you can send the message to the server this way. So just letting you know, and let's go to the production. So we're going to need Express. Let me see if I already installed it. Yeah, I have Express, which is awesome. Yes, I think I can close this. So let me explain why we need the node adapter. So let me just stop the development server. Let me run npm run build. If you're using npm, the commands are the same. So let me just show you the side here so you can see what's going on. I'm going to collapse this npm run build and this should work. So here you can see it created a build folder and here is the index and a handler JS. So we can create our own custom express server and we can pass it the handler as an express middleware. So SvelteKit is going to take care of everything rest like the routing, etc. So we don't really have to run two servers, right? So that's what I explained here in the post. So let's see how this works in practice. So at the root of the project, just because it's easier to include it in the script in a moment, I've created a folder server so let's create server index.js. Let me just collapse everything. So again, we're in the root server index.js, but you can place it whatever you want or whatever your build step is, right? Yeah, so let me just close the terminal and let's just make our own little cute custom server, right? So we can say import express from express. And don't worry if you don't understand backend, I'm not a backend expert, I just made this work and I'm showing it to you now, right? So create server from HTTP. This is our server that we previously passed from Vtrite. And then we're basically doing the same thing. So we're saying server from socket.io and here is the handler. So we need to say from, then we need to go to the build. We need to get the handler and then we define port 3000. Then we say app express. Then we create the server, create server, pass it the app. And again, same as before, we say IO new server, server. And then we can say IO on connection. And then again, we have the socket and we say socket emit event from server. And you can say hello world. Let me copy over the emoji. I actually have an emoji picker, but if I would use it here, it would mess with the recording. So that's why I always copy the emojis if you're curious. So here I even commented for you how this works and I link to the GitHub repository where this code is concerned. So yeah, so we can use the middleware app use and middleware in Express is basically, it intercepts the response and request object and it changes it. So basically SwellKit is here like Jesus, it takes the wheel and we don't have to worry about anything else. And then we say server, listen, port. And then we save this. And for the last step, go to your package JSON. We're going to add a script. So if you scroll down here, you can see your scripts. We can include a start script and say node. Yes, yeah, so we're just invoking it with node, right? This is going to start the Svelte development server and our WebSockets. Yeah, so we can save this. So let me just recap. So we created a custom server by creating a custom express server that we're going to create a script here and start it. So this starts instead of the one in the build because usually SwellKit would run this. So here it describes the same thing and it shows you here how it works. Yeah, so let me just close this and I'm going to close the sidebar and for the moment of truth, don't forget we have to run our server. So you don't run npm run dev, but now we have to execute our script which if you remember is just start and we can just do that by saying start you don't even have to say run so everything should work we're now in production and if i refresh this it works and also if you need to pass environment variables i have a post on using environment variables in SwellKit. 
So that's it. Thanks for watching and catch you later.